true. If it goes against what makes me happy, if it goes against what makes me comfortable, if it goes against what I want to do, we have a hard time accepting truth. And we'll twist scripture. And we'll twist the Bible. And we'll make excuses for ourselves. And we'll use that old standby God understands. <coughs> If it's the word, it's the truth. If it's the truth, it must be obeyed. If it's not obeyed, Jesus said, you shall in no wise enter in. We have to accept it. We have to get a hold of it. Whether we like it or whether we don't like it, we have to accept the truth. Little kids are teachable. They have a hunger. They have a desire. It might get really annoying sometimes when everything is why. Why? Why? <laughs> but you know why they do that? Because they have a hunger. They have a desire to learn. They want to know. Problem with Christians is they don't want to know. We should be that hungry for the word, for the wisdom that can only come from God, Amen. for the knowledge that only God can give. We should have a hunger like that. And you know what? It would please God to no end if you went to him and went, why? 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 He would like that because it shows a desire to learn. It shows a desire to grow. It shows a desire to gain knowledge and to gain wisdom. We need to have that hunger to be taught. Like little kids have that hunger to be taught. There is nobody more teachable than a little child. They say, if you can get them within the first five years, whatever you teach them then sticks for the rest of their life. You know, it's the same with a Christian. If you can teach them shortly after they are born again, if you can teach them the truth, it sticks with them. But if you don't, if you begin to teach them false doctrine or you begin to let them get away with things, that's what sticks with them. And what happens? They get off the path and they get out there and get into things that they are not to be getting into because they weren't taught. And if they're not taught early, then they become unteachable. People are stubborn. People will get locked on something and they will refuse to let go of it. You can show them in the Word in black and white and they will still refuse to let go of what they've been hanging on to. They become unteachable. We must be teachable. I said since I've been here, I've said this. We need to get back to the Word and listen to what the Word says. Understand what the Word said. And I've said this. I'm going to say it again. God says what He means. And God means what He says. We need to let go of everything else. Hey, any teaching we've had growing up. Anything somebody else has told us. Anything we've developed for ourselves. And just be taught the Word. And understand the Word. And listen to the Word. We need to be as teachable as those little children are. If you get in there and you begin to read. And it seems like it's a little uh, different from what you do. Or you don't quite understand. Do like that little child. And go to God and say why? What? Show me. Teach me. That's what that child is doing. And although you may get annoyed with that grandchild or with that child that's following you around for an hour going, why? 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 God does not get annoyed. God wants you to ask questions. God wants you to learn. God wants you to be teachable. And that is how we must be. I'll tell you something else. Little children don't judge or condemn. Christians do. Yes. Christians are good at it. That's something we've become very good at. It. When was the last time you saw a little child do that? Judge you or condemn you for something you know. Whatever I'm doing and my grandchildren see me, they just accept that's what I'm doing. They don't come and tell me, now, Pop, you know you are not to be doing that because you're going to hell. They don't do that. We do that. We came up in Sunday school. It's not our job to do that. Right. We're not supposed to judge or condemn. Uh, I know I said in Sunday school, but it bears repeating. We're not judges and we're not lawyers. What are we? We are witnesses. Right. Think about a courtroom. There's a guy sitting up there called the judge who's going to pass judgment. There's a guy called a lawyer who's going to bring out everything you did or that person did or this person did or what. There's a witness. What does the witness do? They just tell. 
what they know, what they've seen, what they've experienced. They just tell it. They don't say to the guy that's on trial, the witness don't come up and say, you shouldn't have already done that. They just tell what they know. That's what we are as Christians. We're supposed to tell what we know. What we know is the word. That's what we're supposed to tell. God is the judge. Right. Amen. It's not our job to judge or to condemn. Just like that little child who does not do that, we need to have that characteristic. We need to have that quality within us. When a child, I talk about them being affectionate, but when they love you, they love you all the way. They fully give their heart. They fully give you themselves. They give you everything. That's what we need to do to God. You know, you all know the scriptures. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God wants it all. God wants everything. Just like that child will sell out to you, we need to sell out to God. We need to fully give him ourselves. We need to fully give him everything we got. We need to fully, fully be in him, be in his care, be in his love. We need to have that same quality that that little child has. And a little child displays simplicity like nobody ever displayed simplicity. And I'm going to tell you something. We try to make things complicated. We try to make things difficult. You know why we do that? So I can go to school for eight years and then you've got to pay me big bucks to explain it to you. We need that same simplicity that a child. I'm going to tell you something. The word of God is simple. I already said it. I'm going to say it again. God says what he means. And he means what he says. It's that simple. If it says it, it's so. Just like a little child, they are so simple. Hey, they just accept it. They just go on. They, they just receive it. They just go on. They're not constantly taking what you say and trying to find something else in it. If you would tell a little child to come and they ask you for the candy and you say, well, you can have the candy after you eat your supper. And a little child is thinking, hmm, can I have my candy after I eat the supper? I ate my supper yesterday. So now I get the candy. That's what Christians do. We'll try to find a way out of something. We'll try to make it more convoluted and difficult. It's plain and it's simple and it means what he said. The, the, the Bible is just so plain. And so I'm going to tell you something. God is plain. God is simple with us. He knows who we are. He knows what we are. And he is plain and he is simple with us. We want to take everything and make it all convoluted and try to make it difficult to understand and try to tell other people, well, you haven't studied long enough. You don't, haven't had the revelation that I've had. You don't understand this. You don't know. But it's simple. And we need to have that simplicity. Hey, the gospel is such a simple thing. The Bible tells us that a wayfaring man, though a fool, would not err therein. It is so simple that a child can understand it. But we've tried to make everything all difficult and convoluted and messed up. We need that simplicity. You don't got to live your life in some kind of other fashion. God wants you to live according to these characteristics. He wants you to live according to the dictates of a heart that is sold out to him. It's not about ritual and it's not about ceremony. And it's not about doing everything to the letter and crossing every T and dotting every I. It's about the heart. It's about having a heart that's given to God. And because you have a heart that's given to God, you have those characteristics that are pleasing to Him. It's just that simple. And if you truly have a heart that is pleasing to Him, you don't even got to think about it. You just get up and you live your life. That child does not think about being a child. They don't think about being honest. They don't think about being teachable. They don't think about being humble. It's just who they are. And if we're really sold out to God, if we really are children of God, if we've really been converted, and that's what Jesus said, unless you become converted and become as little children, you shall no wise enter in. If we've really been converted, totally converted, we don't got to think about it. We just live it. Because where your heart is, is where you will go. Where your heart is, is where you will walk. Where your heart is, is what you will speak. And we talked about this in Sunday school.
door. It's not what enters into a man that defiles him, but what proceeds from the heart. Not that he does the ceremony wrong. Not that he does the ritual wrong. Not that he don't understand all the mysteries. But it's what comes out of his heart. And what comes out of a heart is what you put into a heart. What comes out of the heart is the characteristics that you develop. The characteristics that you allow to come in. You were once that sweet little child. You were once that new convert that was never any more pure than he was at that moment. But as time went on, you began to lose those characteristics. You begin to develop other characteristics. And why am I saying you? Because there ain't a one of us here that's walking in every one of them that has went away that is pleasing to God for us to walk in every one of them. And we need to get back. We need to come back. We need to humble ourselves. We need to become as little children. And then Jesus said, if you become as little children, you know what he said? Anyone that's like these little children is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's not the one that holds the most offices in the church. It's not the one that's got the most letters behind their name. The one that spent the most years in seminary, wrote the most books, had the biggest TV show. It's not none of that. It's the one that has these characteristics. That's who Jesus says is great. Just, he wants a child that is humble that is simple, that is lovable, affectionate, that is teachable, that is all those things. That's what he wants. And you answer for yourself. I can't answer for you. How many of those areas, and there are many more, but this is where God has told me to go. How many of those areas do you excel in? You answer it. I don't think there's anybody sitting here that can say all of them. What is a Christian? That's a Christian. That's a child of God. According to Jesus. He said, unless you are like a little child, you can't enter heaven. He said, unless you are like a little child, you're not what he wants you to be. That's a Christian. We come up with... Well, it's to be Christ-like. We come up with all these. But that's what Jesus just said it is. That's what he said that he wants. That's what he said that is required. That is what he is looking for. We don't got to be something we're not. We just got to be what he wants us to be. And if we would be converted, if we would be fully converted and become as that little child, then we would be what he wants us to be. And then you know how we would live? Like a little child, never giving it a thought, just being that. Just being that. If God fully indwells you, if you've been fully converted, if he is inside of you, if he is directing you, if he has guided you, if he has converted you, you can just live. Just live. Because that's who you are. And again, I I can't think of a more perfect example than what Christ has given. That little child doesn't think about any of these things. It's just who they are. It's just how they do. It's just what they do. It's just how they live. And that's how we should be. We were once that sweet little child. But as we grow up, things come in and things change us. And things rearrange us. Might be an example you don't care for, but God put it on my mind. Hitler was once a sweet little child. Mm -hmm. Charles Manson was once a sweet little child. What happened? Evil came in. Every Christian who's ever been born again was once pure. For that brief moment, Pure as you're ever going to be on this side. But from the time you raised up, things begin to come in. Mm-hmm. Things begin to pollute. Things begin to dirty. Things begin to break down. And we made no effort to stop it. God wants people. Listen, I'm going to read this one more time. 
Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Pretty plain. And I truly believe God showed me these things. That when he was talking about a little child, he was talking about those characteristics. It's what needs to be in a convert, what needs to be in a born-again Christian. Those are the char characteristics that God is looking for in us. Those are the things that God wants us to become. And we can. We can. We can get back to that. We can become that if we choose to become that. If we make the effort to become that. If we desire. If we go. And, and you know, one place David wrote, Purge me with this. Wash me. Make me clean. We can do the same thing. We can go to God for a cleansing. We can go to God to get the splinters removed and get the briars removed and get the dirt wiped off. We can do that. So often we just choose not to. We try to fix it ourselves or just live with it or make excuses for it. But God does not want that. God is not pleased with that. God wants a childlike character in his children. And again, one more time. I'm almost done. When he said little children... <coughs> To be as a little child. He's not talking the way most of us are as little children now. Throwing a fit and pouting and bawling and, and causing them trouble. And that's not what he's talking about. We got that one down. Now let's do it the way he wants us to do it. I believe that's the definition of a Christian. I truly believe that. That's what God's looking for. He's looking for people with those characteristics. He's looking for people that will live that life. And I know I said it, but I've got to say it again. If we would become that, all we got to do then is just live it. Just like that little child. He doesn't think about being that. That's what he is. So therefore, that's how he lives. If we are sold out to God, then that becomes what we are. And we don't have to think about it. That's just how we live. That's it. I'll stop. Uh, I hope you got it. I hope you understood it. Uh, um, again, we need to understand what the Bible is saying. We need to understand what it is that God is telling us. We need to understand what it is that God wants us to be. You know, it does not matter what my favorite preacher says. It does not matter what the guy on TV says. It does not matter what my denomination or how I was brought up said. What matters is what that word said. And I believe that Jesus put it there very plain and very simple. He said, unless you become like that, unless you become like a little child, have characteristics as a little child, unless you are that, you shall in no wise enter into heaven. Jesus said it. He said it very plain. He didn't hold back. He didn't make it so you couldn't understand it. We need to understand that he means what he says. And we need to know that we need to do something about it. That's all that I have. Let's pray.